things like seven months and beyond. Uh, but Gopal Chandra Prabhu is our temple president at Iskana of Round Rock. Um, Prabhu and his family have been committed to serving in this path of Krishna consciousness for many, many years. Um, and Prabhu uh, is a fantastic speaker, very well knowledge uh, in this Shastra. And he always presents scriptures in such a practical and uh, relevant way that it makes it very easy for us to understand. Uh, Prabhu pr works professionally at GM. And uh, so if you ever see him driving a non-GM car, uh, you can uh, report to somebody because that's not allowed. Uh, but Prabhu's also a Bhakti Shastri and he's a disciple of His Holiness Ramana Swami Maharaj. Uh, and we're very honored and excited to hear from Prabhu today. Uh, Prabhu's going to be speaking to us about mind control, um, something that's very relevant as we see our minds running away like wild horses. So really excited to hear from Gopal Chandra Prabhu today on the topic of mind control. Hare Krishna. Uh, Hare Krishna, Mataji, can you hear me okay? Yes, Prabhu. Thank you, Mataji. Thank you very much, Mahasundari Mataji, for those uh, kind words of introduction, uh, which I don't deserve. But uh, I'm happy to understand uh, uh, your heart, uh, your expectations and the standards you have for me. So hopefully one day I will uh, meet at least a fraction of those uh, standards. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much for those kind words. Uh, I would like to offer my sincere obeisances to all the Vaishnavas on the call today. And also like to seek your blessings so that whatever word comes out of my mouth will be of some use. So the topic uh, we are going to uh, see today is real control of mind. So what consumes your mind controls your life. What consumes your mind controls, of your, controls your life. So this topic, that's why it's very important and very relevant for us today. Uh, the sharing uh, privileges, uh, am I able to share a presentation? Yes, Prabhu. Yes, let me go ahead and share my screen. Please let me know when you can see it. You can see it. Thank you, Mataji. So what consumes your mind controls your life. So uh, this topic is very important. So a thief uh, knows very well that when he is committing a crime, if he gets caught, he is going to be punished. And after he gets caught, let's say if he is put in jail, he promises in front of the judge and also to himself that I will not do this crime again. But what happens as soon as he comes out of the jail, it starts doing the same mistake, same crime again. Same way, a student knows very well that if he doesn't study or work hard, he is going to fail in the exam. An employee knows very well that if he doesn't work hard, he is not going to be promoted or he may even get fired. And we all take so many resolutions, so many vows during New Year and so forth, but those do not last long. We go back to the old behavior the things that negatively impact us, we keep doing them over and over again and again. Why is that? Does anybody think about it? So Parikshit Maharaj had the same question that he was asking Sukhdev Goswami. So a criminal knows very well that he is going to be punished by the government and people are going to be rebuking at him. And not only that, in his future birth, he is going to be suffering hellish conditions. But despite all that, he commits the same sin again and again. Why is that? So Srimad Bhagavatam says that it is because of the uncontrolled and impure mind. Bhagavad Gita says, just like how a boat on water is swept away by the wind, similarly, one of the roaming senses could take away the intelligence, could sweep away the intelligence. Therefore, it is very, very important on what we are feeding our mind and senses. It's very, very important what we are feeding the mind and the senses. If you think about it, mind is like a blotting paper. It absorbs anything and everything that it comes in contact with. So we have to be very, very careful on what we are exposing ourselves to, the external environment we are exposing ourselves to. 
for example the friends we interact with the family members we live with every day the different kinds of things we talk with them the magazines we read the newspapers we read the websites we browse the social media we spend most of our time on all these things influence our thoughts our behavior and attitude that's why we have to be extremely careful let us say we are exposing ourselves to an unrighteous or a immoral environment at that time the unrighteous thought is sown in our mind after that if we keep engaging in the same activity again and again the seed fructifies and we start doing horrendous things before we even realize that some of the things which may we may not have thought of doing it before so we would end up doing all those things whereas the association with a saintly person it purifies our mind and senses shrimad bhagavatam says even half a moment of association with a pure devotee is a priceless treasure we all know shri prabhupad when he came to the west all the hippies got transformed into happies they left all their bad habits meat eating intoxication illicit sex gambling everything they became pure devotees why that is the power of association of a pure devotee same way we all know mrigati the cruel hunter he would half kill animals half kill them so that he can enjoy seeing them die but after the association of narada muni he got transformed into a person who would be very careful walking on the ground because he was worried that he may step on the ants so such is the power of association of a pure devotee so as practicing devotees we should be proactive to take the right steps to cleanse our mind and senses and at the same time be careful that all these uh, impurities do not enter our heart again so once they are purified we will not be committing any sins we will not be making any mistakes after that because of that we will not go through any suffering so at that point we are able to focus on the higher purpose of life we are able to focus on shri krishna we can develop bhakti towards krishna so that is how we should control our mind and that is why the mind control is very very important so that is going to be the topic for today with that we will go to the pranam prayers ओ मज्ञान तिमरंद से ज्ञानांजनाशलाकय चक्षुरुन्मीलित येन तस्मै श्री गुरुवे नमः श्री चैतन्य मनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूपा खदामयम ददाति स्वपदांतिकम वन्देहं श्री गुरु श्री युता पदकमलम श्री गुरुन वैष्णवांश श्री रूपं साग्रजादां सगहना रघुनाथान्वितं तमस जीवं सात्वैतं सावदूतं परिजना सहितं कृष्ण चैतन्य देवं श्री राधा कृष्ण पदान सगगणा ललिता श्री विशाखान्वे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधु दीन बंधु जगत्पते गोपेशा गोपिका कांता राधा कांता नमोस्तुते सप्त कांचना गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभाणु सुते देवी प्रणमा हरिप्रिय वाचा कल्पतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादी गौरभक्त बृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे जय द वर्ड्स वी आर गोइंग टू रीड टुडे इज फ्रॉम भगवदगीता चैप्टर सिक्स वर्ड्स थर्टी सिक्स असम यतात्मना योगो दुष्प्रापयति मे मतिति पश्यात्मना तु यतता सख्यो वाक्तुं उपायतः सिनेनम्स असम यता अनब्राइडल्ड आत्मना बाय द माइंड योगा सेल्फ सेल्फ रियलाइजेशन दुष्प्राप डिफिकल्ट टू अबटेन इति दस मी माय मतिहि ओपिनियन वस्य कंट्रोल्ड आत्मना बाय द माइंड to but yatata while endeavoring sakya practical avaktum to achieve upayatah by appropriate means 
translation and purport by his divine grace is equal to the other promise the prophet the prophet teacher for one whose mind is unbridled self realization is difficult to work but he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success that is my opinion purport the supreme personality of godhead declares that one who does not accept the proper treatment to detach the mind from material engagement can hardly achieve success in self realization trying to practice yoga while engaging the mind in material enjoyment is like trying to ignite a fire while pouring water on it yoga practice without mental control is a waste of time such a show of yoga may be materially lucrative but it is useless as far as spiritual realization is concerned therefore one must control the mind by engaging it constantly in the transcendental loving service of the lord unless one is engaged in krishna consciousness he cannot steadily control the mind a krishna conscious person achieves or easily achieves the result of yoga practice without separate endeavor but a yoga practitioner cannot achieve success without becoming krishna conscious so let us uh, read the translation again for one whose mind is unbridled self realization is difficult to work but he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success that is my opinion the proof of the ki jai so the krishna in this verse talks about how one can use yoga for perfection if you think about think about it yoga in essence means control of mind controlling the mind and uncontrolled mind is one's worst enemy whereas a controlled mind is one's best friend in fact shrimad bhagavatam says in all of creation your only enemy is the uncontrolled mind your only enemy so as we are leading our lives we try to discriminate okay this is good this is bad he is my friend he is my enemy so what gives pleasure to me pleasure to my senses is good what gives me suffering is bad this person helps me fulfill my desire so he is my friend this person comes in the way of my desire so he is my enemy so that is how we try to discriminate all the time prahlad maharaj says when he went to gurukul actually he was talking with his teachers his teachers were teaching him prahlad you should try to discriminate based on your egoistic selfish desires if somebody is fulfilling your desires then he is your friend you should try to make allies with him if somebody is giving you suffering then he is your enemy so you should try to subdue or control him that's what they were teaching if you think about it uh, in today's schools also that's what uh, being taught directly or indirectly but pralan maharaj says this is all nonsense this is not real education this is a distraction from the real education so what is real education vidya vinay sampanne brahmane gavi hastini suni chaiva swapake cha pandita samadarshanah pandita samadarshanah gita says a self realized person sees everybody every living entity equally because they know the paramatma krishna is present in them and also the atma the part and parcel of god the beloved child of god is also present in them so every living entity has a atma and paramatma so they see everyone equally whether it is a learned brahmana or a cow or an elephant or even a dog eater they see all of them equally and also whether something good or bad happens even if something very bad happens they think it is for their ultimate good they understand okay they have to take shelter of krishna in that mood if we say my dear krishna it could have been worse but your by your mercy your causeless mercy you have reduced it to just a token of suffering and that too for my own purification so everything is my 
for my good so if we are in that mindset then we are able to make spiritual progress because if you think about it everything that is happening in your life is for your spiritual evolution spiritual growth ultimately we have to get out of this material world and go back to krishna and that's why everything is being orchestrated by krishna there is a popular verse from shrimad bhagavatam tatena kampam susamik samano gunjane evatma kritam apakam kritva vapurvir vidada namaste jivet yomukti padese dayabak my dear lord one who earnestly waits for you to bestow your causeless mercy upon him all the while patiently suffering the reactions of his past misdeeds and offering you respectful obeisances with his heart words and body is surely eligible for liberation for it has become his rightful claim so we all know queen quinti the illustrious mother of the five pandavas she went through so many troubles and calamities in her life she would at any cost protect her children but if you think about today's world the motherhood is very deteriorated it's been degraded your mother if she thinks this particular child is going to cause me some inconvenience then she is ready to murder it if you think about it in the us unfortunately today one out of every new born babies is being murdered is killed in the womb because the mother thinks this child may cause some inconvenience to me that's so unfortunate if you think about the animal world the tiger the male tiger is very dangerous it would go go out and hunt and bring food for the family members but the female tiger the tigress is even more dangerous if it senses that uh, some creature whether it is gorilla or elephant or some human being with a rifle is going to harm her babies it will become mad and ferocious it will do anything and everything to kill that person to protect her babies so that is the motherhood in the animal kingdom what about human beings we are supposed to be advanced than them but unfortunately that is not the case today but queen kunti was a first class mother she was very compassionate she was uh, ready to protect her children at any cost the kaura was burnt kunti and her children in a house tried to burn them but somehow by vidura's mercy they got protected they also fed bima poison they exiled them from the kingdom so she went through so many trials and tribulations all in her life and on top of that the kurukshetra war but somehow krishna resolved everything and in the end gave the kingdom to her children to rule over but after that shri krishna was getting ready to go to dwaraka that's when she was feeling so much anxious queen kunti was praying my dear krishna please don't go let the calamities come to me let all these problems come to me because if the problems come i remember you if they don't come i forget you i may become complacent so please don't go vipada santuta sasva tatra tatra jagat guru bhavato darshanam yat syat apunar bhavat darshanam my dear krishna if i take darshan of you if i see you i don't have to take darshan of repeated birth and death so that is how she was praying so that is the mood of a devotee of a self realized soul they use every opportunity to purify themselves and that is the real control of mind that is the real control of mind whereas you say in the materialistic state of consciousness so bhagavad gita says the person with a controlled mind sees everything equally so he sees 24 karat gold and the filth and dirt or the pebbles on the road the same way coming from india we are all uh, familiar with all these uh, posh jewelry stores they are so huge 
they have a marble front marble floor there are so many gods all around they are so beautiful and there are so many chopped uh, or models with chopped heads with jewelry hanging from all over earrings necklaces and so forth but if you come out and take a few steps you will see a gutter with people urinating in them there is so much filth and dirt dirt so if you are a devotee if you have understood bhagavad gita properly you will see the dirt and the gold equally how much anxiety it takes to purchase that gold Uh, I don't know if it's just on my side. Some people, voice is breaking up. Yeah, I think the connection is really poor. Um, I thought it was just me. Yeah, Prabhuji's voice is gone. He's not hearing about it. Uh, yeah, we cannot hear Prabhuji. Hare Krishna, Prabhuji. Now we can hear you, Prabhu. When you started talking about gold, your voice went away. It seems like your connection is a little poor. Your voice is very low, Prabhu ji. Also, just so you. Yeah, Mathi, the connection is unstable. But is it okay now? Yes, Prabhu. Yeah, Prabhu ji, if you can come a little closer and speak, you know, yes, because your voice is also low. Thank okay. you. Okay, thank you. Is it okay, Prabhu ji? Now, is it good? A uh, little more loud, Prabhu. Little more close. Okay, Hare Krishna. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a devotee sees everything equally, whether it is twenty-four uh, karat gold or. Uh, dirt on the street so if you think about it what is earth earth is pure you can grow food on earth but uh, can you eat gold can you drink gold no but you can trade it with something but what if there is nothing or no food to trade it with what are you going to trade it with but if you think about it uh, in the material world everything has its own purpose but uh, realized soul or a person with a controlled mind understands that everything has to be used in the service of the supreme lord krishna because everything is coming from him ultimately so if he has gold and he is uh, doing aarti to his deities he is decorating the deities so he will decorate them with nice gold and if he just has dirt he will make a nice tilak out of dirt out of mud and offer them to the deities so this is the way to attract the all attractive supreme lord so whatever you have whatever situation you are in you you have to try to make it conducive for advancing in your uh, bhakti advancing towards the highest goal of life so that is the control of mind real control of mind so when success comes a person with a controlled mind understands sir everything is happening due to krishna's mercy krishna says he is the sarva karana karanam cause of all causes he is the controller of the material nature a person with a controlled mind sees everything according to the reality you don't have to go and study rocket science or read through pages of literature it is just applying common sense and seeing the reality as it is because we are just instruments in the hands of god the intelligence we have is coming from krishna buddhir buddhimatam asmi tejas tejas vinam aham krishna says i am the intelligence of the intelligent the strength of the strong the ability in man so we have to see everything according to that reality we are just instruments in the hands of krishna prakrute kriyamanani gunahi karmani sarvasah अहंकार विमुदात्मा कर्ता हम इति मन्यते द स्पिरिट सोल बिवल्डेड बाय द इन्फ्लुएंस ऑफ फॉल्स इगो थिंक्स हिमसेल्फ एज द डूअर ऑफ एक्टिविटीज दैट आर इन एक्चुअलिटी कैरीड आउट बाय द थ्री मोड्स ऑफ मटेरियल नेचर एंड कृष्णा गोस ऑन माया दक्षिण प्रकृति सूयते स चराचरम केतुनानेन कोंतेय जगत विपरि वर्तते दिस मटेरियल नेचर व्हिच इज वन ऑफ माय एनर्जीज इज वर्किंग अंडर माय डायरेक्शन सो कृष्णा सेज everything is controlled by me you cannot even open and speak a word without krishna's mercy you cannot even open our eyes there is no guarantee that uh, we will wake up alive in the morning 
there is this uh, popular story I wanted to share with you. There was this uh, speaker, uh, this lady in America. She was a wonderful speaker. She would go on and on speaking for hours and hours. She would speak with so much clarity and precision and determination that there would be pin drop silence in the auditorium. People would be glued onto their seats. She would just open her mouth and the words would magically come to her. She had thousands and thousands of followers. People would say she's the prophet of God because who else can speak like that? But one day it so happened by the arrangement of material nature and the circumstances, she got this Alzheimer's disease. Then after that, she couldn't even talk about anything to anyone. She couldn't even remember her name. So Krishna gives and Krishna takes. Krishna gives and Krishna takes. In the history, we've seen so many conquerors. I don't know how many of you know the first lady of Philippines, uh, Imelda. She had thousands of pairs of uh, shoes, shoes and sandals. What to speak of the gow gowns and the garments, all those things she had. But after a moment, she was running away with her husband as a refugee from the country. So that is the power of material nature. By the law of karma, Krishna gives and Krishna takes. So to think we are the doer, we are controlling everything, is illusion, it's stupidity actually. Krishna actually says, to think that you are the doer is being impious. That's what Krishna says. So Krishna, in the Gita, he was telling Arjuna, Arjuna, don't be attached to victory or defeat. Because I am the ultimate doer. Don't be attached to the fruits of your action. Why? Because I am the cause of the fruits of your action. So controlling the mind means offering the credit to Krishna because he is the cause of our fruits of our action. So we should give the credit to Krishna. We should give the credit to where it's due. Oftentimes we hear people say, Jai Shri Krishna. So if you literally mean what you're saying, it means you're offering all the credits and the benefits we have gained in our life to Krishna. That's what it means. But do we really mean it? We say Jai Shri Krishna, but internally we think Jai Shri me. Jai Shri me. All glories to me. Even after becoming a devotee, sometimes uh, when I give classes, I feel I say Jai Shri Krishna, but internally I think people should think like, okay, Jai Shri Gopal Chandra Prabhu. He's speaking so nicely. Is giving so much uh, uh, nectarian Krishna Kata. So that is the disease of the conditioned mind. So when we get success, we should offer the results to Krishna. We should understand he is the cause of the success and the credit should go to him and he should enjoy it. And if we encounter failure, we oftentimes uh, try to blame others. We think, okay, it is his fault, it is her fault, it is its fault, it's that's fault. Finally, it's Krishna's fault. So what about me? How come it's not my fault? But instead, if you understand, okay, this is my fault, in that mood, if you turn towards Krishna, then the whole situation becomes auspicious. So if you think about when Krishna was born to Vasudev when Devaki in the jail, Krishna appeared in the jail. Vasudev, he was a Kshatriya. His job was to protect uh, his children and family, but he couldn't do any of that. All his six children were killed by Kamsa. His wife was in jail. It was a miserable situation. But because he depended on Krishna, he thought Krishna is the only savior. Then the miserable experience turned into an auspicious celebration. We all celebrate the appearance of Krishna as Janmashtami. So this is the way one should control the mind. So I was listening to this uh, class. I can't remember the devotee's name. But uh, uh, there was this beautiful example of how one can control the mind and focus and meditate on Krishna. So uh, Gopal Sharshanam, it says Krishna is uh, Nitya Utsavaha. He likes festivals. 
he likes to celebrate festivals all the time. So as an example, uh, let's say we are celebrating Ratayatra in the temple. Krishna would come and Krishna would say, after the festival, I will go back to Golok Vrindavan. So we, we should say, no, 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 Krishna, Balram Jayanti is coming, so you should stay. So Krishna would think, okay, it's my uh, brother's uh, festival appearance day, so I will offer respects, so I will stay with you. Then after that, you would say, Krishna, no, no, Janmashtami is coming, it's your birthday, you have to stay with us. And Krishna would say, okay, I will stay for another week with you. Then after that, I will go back to Golok Vrindavan. No, no, Krishna, Radhashtami is coming. Radhashtami, okay, is my internal potency, so I have to stay. Then I will go for sure. No, no, Krishna, after that, Govardhan Puja is coming. Remember, you lifted the Govardhan Hill. Okay, Krishna will say, uh, okay, I will stay back. Okay, after that, I'm sure I'm going to go back. No, no, Krishna, New Year is coming. New Year? What did I do during New Year? No, no, Krishna, our festivals, our New Year is Krishna-centric, so you have to stay. So likewise, if we keep on saying, if we keep on celebrating all these festivals, Krishna will stay with us. So one may ask, okay, how do I celebrate these festivals? It requires a lot of Lakshmi, a lot of money. And I have to uh, make elaborate preparation, feast for the devotees and so forth. But no, that is all not required. If you have a picture of Krishna, deity of Krishna, and if you chant his holy names and sing Kirtan for Krishna, Krishna takes that as the festival. That is how you control the mind, by focusing, meditating on Krishna. In the end, Manmana Bhava Madhbhakto Madhyaji Maam Namashkuru Maam EYCC Satyam Te Pratijane Priyosmi. This is the perfection of controlling the mind. We should always think about Krishna in a favorable way. Anukuliyena Krishna Anusiranam. In a way favorable to Krishna. If you think about it, the Prajavasis, Arjuna, they all thought about Krishna. But they thought about him in a favorable way. Whereas Kamsa was thinking about Krishna all the time, 24 by 7, in a particular unfavorable way. So when the demons were coming to attack the Vrajavasis, they were not thinking, we were growing our crops nicely, we were milking our crops or uh, our cows. Where are these demons coming and attacking us? No, they didn't think like, like, like that. They thought Krishna is our only shelter. He's our only savior. We should go to Krishna. When Indra was sending torrents of rain, when there was a blazing fire in the forest, they were saying, Krishna Mahabahu, Krishna, you are the only protector. So if we turn towards Krishna, at every opportunity, then we become fearless. And that is how we control the mind. Because there is danger at every step in this material world, if you think about it. Padam padam yet padam na That's what Pranam Maharaj says. says. There is danger at every step. So there is this beautiful bhajan we all know. Bhaja hore mana Shri Nanda Nandana Bhaya Charanara Vindare Durlabha Manava Janama Satsange Oh mind, take shelter of the lotus feet of Krishna and you become fearless. <coughs> Excuse me. Vipala sevino kripana durajana chapala sukala balagire. So you've been working uh, so hard uh, without seeing day and night, uh, winter or summer. Uh, for what? For this flickering happiness. Yedana yauvana. Putra parijana ite ki ache parati tire. Kamala dala jala jivana tala mala. Bajahu haripada ni tire. What is the use of depending on your wealth, dana, your youth, your children, your family members, your friends? Ultimately, every, everything is going to go away. They are like drops of water on a lotus leaf. 
they may slip and fall away at any time it is like building a sand castle on the shore of a ocean the wave of time is coming closer and closer and at any moment one fateful wave will wipe away everything and everything will be gone so what is the use instead take shelter of the lotus feet of krishna meditate on krishna shravana kirtana smarana vandana pada sevana dasyare ujjan sakhi jan atmanivedana govind dasa vilasare think about krishna hear about krishna meditate on krishna worship krishna pray to krishna become friends with krishna serve the lotus feet of krishna surrender everything to krishna these are the different ways practical ways one can meditate on krishna so krishna says maam upetiya punar janma dukhalayam ashashvatam naaptumati mahatmana samsiddhim paramam gata so if you meditate on krishna you can escape the duality of this material world the material world is stamped as dukhalayam ashashvatam a place of misery a place of temporariness so you can escape the miseries that you have experienced in this material world and at the time of death krishna says anta kale cha maam eva smaran muktva kalevaram yap prayati sa madbhavam yati nati atra samsayah so anybody who quits this body remembering me to attain me yoginam api sarvesam madgate nantar atmana shraddhavan bhajate yoma samay yukta thamomatah and of all of all the yogis one with great faith who thinks of me who renders transcendental loving service to me he is the most intimate and he is the highest of all so this meditating on krishna with the faith is important often times in even in yoga classes we say meditate on the tip of your nose or meditate on the inhalation and exhalation meditate on the different sensations of your body or even they give a uh, some impersonal stick mantra and ask you to meditate so these things uh, can help us control our mind only to a certain extent but they cannot give us shelter only the lotus feet of krishna the bhakti towards krishna will give us shelter so when there are problems uh, we can run towards all these uh, shelters temporary shelters but they are like fallible soldiers they cannot protect you only krishna can save us i don't know how many of you have seen this movie uh, this movie called as joker i think uh, it was a hollywood movie it came last year this movie shows the infallible nature of all the things which we normally rely on whether it is our parents our family our wealth our doctors the government and so forth the hero of this movie none of his uh, desires or hankerings for protection safety were fulfilled his mother was not able to give him the love he needs the father couldn't give him protection the government cut the funding for his uh, health care and medicines the employer fired him he was beaten up by a group of people on the road so he went through all these problems so gita says the consequence of all this is anger and frustration so people may vent out their anger in the form of uh, depression they can turn towards drugs or they can they do uh, more serious things they can cause domestic violence they can commit suicides mass shootings and things like that why is this all happening it is all because of lack of understanding of atma tatva what is atma tatva understanding who we are who is god what is our relationship with him but instead of that we excessively rely on all these uh, temporary shelters whether it is our family our wealth and so forth these things can protect us they will fight for us in the battlefield but at the end of the day they are fragile soldiers they will fall away in the end they cannot give us eternal happiness or eternal protection from anxiety only krishna can give us krishna is called achita infallible is called akinchana gochara shelter of the shelterless so we have to go towards him so even 
if we don't have any of these problems that were experienced by this hero of this movie, Joker, we still have to face death, old age, and disease, and all these economic recessions. In the end, everything will go away. So Jesus Christ says, we should have something that cannot be reached by moth or thieves. That is the spiritual treasure we should have. That is a devotion or attachment towards Krishna. Focusing on that is the control of mind. So one may ask, what do I have to focus on Krishna? Why not some other personality? So Arjuna says in the Gita, Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Adi Devam Majam Vibhum Ahustvam Rishya Sarve Devarishar Naradas Tata Asito Devaro Vyasa Swayam Chaiva Bravishime Arjuna says, Krishna, you are the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the ultimate abode, the purest, the absolute truth. You are the eternal, transcendental, original person, the unborn, the greatest. All the great sages, Narada, Asita, Devala, Vyasa, everybody accepts this truth. And now you yourself are declaring this to the world. So Krishna is the ultimate shelter. He is the only person we should focus our mind on. So we all know Arjuna fought the battle of Kurukshetra. So, so a devotee, as devotees, we are facing battles every day in our life. A devotee is not supposed to be a lazy person. A devotee endeavors life with morality, honesty, integrity, and a lot of enthusiasm for Krishna. So if you think about it, Arjuna for the battle, Duryodhana for the battle, but Arjuna was fighting it, thinking, remembering Krishna all the time. In fact, uh, Srila Prabhupada would say, an agitated mind is better than a still mind. Krishna says, Arjuna, you should become agitated, you should become angry for me, you should fight with anger. Oftentimes we hear people say, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, Om Shanti, He. What is peace? Okay, I woke up uh, in the morning today, I went for a walk. People were saying hello to me. There was this nice fragrance coming. Uh, no dogs were barking at me. It was a quiet atmosphere. Is that peace? Is that, uh, that, that, that ambrosial stillness that you get? Is that peace? No. What is soul? The soul is Sachidhananda, not Sachit Shanti. Sachidhananda. It needs that transcendental ecstasy. So Arjuna was fighting in the battle, not for peace. He was fighting, thinking about Krishna. He was in transcendental ecstasy. So if you think about Prahlad Maharaj, when he was thrown into the pit of venomous snakes or he was put under the feet of the elephants, was he thinking about peace? No. He was million light years beyond peace. He was thinking how to take shelter of Krishna. That was the transcendental bliss he was experiencing. If you read Srimad Bhagavatam, the 10th canto, it is filled with all these uh, stories of demons coming, Indra sending rain. The Vrajavasis uh, were not looking for peace. They were looking for shelter of Krishna. So, we should feed the requirements of the soul. What is soul? Sachidhananda. It requires that ecstasy. And every situation, every opportunity, if you turn towards Krishna, will become ecstatic. And that is the real control of mind. That is how we should control mind. Uh, will be done in five minutes. Uh, so, today's verse is explaining that for those, or for, for one whose mind is unbridled, self-realization is difficult to work. But he whose mind is controlled and who strives by appropriate means is assured of success. That is my opinion. So, what is this appropriate means? So, it means thinking or meditating about Krishna in every moment of our life. But it's very difficult, as we all know, because we have been conditioned since time immemorial. So we have to recondition ourselves. How do we do that? We can do that with the help of a spiritual master. So as practicing devotees, under the guidance of our spiritual masters, what do we do? We wake up in the morning, and do we turn on the TV to see what the misery is happening in the world? No. We take bath, we cleanse our bodies to please Krishna. We decorate it with tilak. 
and we take our chanting deeds and we chant the holy names of the lord thus we meditate on the names of the lord then we do mangala aarti we meditate on the form of the lord then we read shrimad bhagavatam we meditate on the pastimes of the lord thus we are completely immersed in the critical part of the day in the morning time we think about krishna and then we go to work we do our duty do we do it egoistically and selfishly no because we know that uh, that will not please krishna and we cannot offer the results to krishna that way but instead if we do it with honesty and sincerity and integrity and humility then we know that krishna will be pleased and we can offer the results to krishna so thus shri prabhupada has given this beautiful very simple process to practice that way we can meditate we can remember krishna in everything we do so your devotee does not think about peace he always thinks about how to please krishna how to please krishna so so the perfection of the control of the mind means at any situation doesn't matter whether it is convenient or inconvenient to me is it pleasing krishna yes then that is a perfect situation that is the real control of mind that is how one can purify the mind and the senses and we can completely be absorbed in krishna and go back to our eternal and natural state which is to be the servant of the supreme lord so with that devotees i will end it here uh, you know sorry for the technical uh, challenges and uh, once again thank you very much for the opportunity uh, i would offer my obeisances and gratitude uh, for today's class to uh, my guru maharaj his holiness uh, radhanath swami this class is a faithful repetition of uh, his lecture and also uh, from uh, to read dandavat articles uh, that i referenced so if there are any mistakes uh, it is my mistakes uh, please pardon me uh, once again thank you very much for the opportunity and uh, i know the this is going to be followed by the teens class uh, uh, we are uh, very excited today to have the teens uh, that are going to be speaking on uh, bhagavad gita chapter 4 and after the mahasam bari mata ji will be uh, speaking about bhadra purnima the auspiciousness of uh, getting uh, shrimad bhagavatam at your homes and also gifting uh, bhagavatam to your friends and well wishers so mahasundari mata ji will be speaking about that so with that i will conclude thank you again devotees uh, if there are uh, i think i don't know if we have time for questions or uh, anybody want to share any realizations uh, mahasundari mata ji over to you or ram ji prabhu uh, thank you thank you for the wonderful class um so maybe what we can do prabhu is if it's okay with devotees um please enter your questions in the chat um so you could ent- enter questions or comments for gopal chandra prabhu and also as the teenagers do their presentation and then we'll just do all questions at the end is that all right with you gopal chandra prabhu yes, just to make sure that you know um that we are giving time for the teens as well to present and that way we can also kind of proceed from there Jai again thank you gopal chandra prabhu for that absolutely wonderful class it is so difficult to control our mind uh but by following some of the tips that you suggested it can truly help us uh to get closer to krishna and our guru so thank you so much for sharing that uh, prabhu if you don't mind stopping sharing your screen please okay So um so everyone dear devotees well, we're really excited today on behalf of Kriti and I to share our first set of presentations by our teenagers um our teenage class last term focused on verses from chapter 4 of the Gita uh, the second part some of the later verses of chapter 4 um and they started at verse 412 i believe and we covered till almost the end of the Gita so for the next uh, end of chapter 4 of the Gita so the next two sundays we're going to have presentation by six of our teenagers will be talking about two topics that we discussed um in the last term so today our first presentation is going to be given by Shreya Hansa and um uh, and Risha Do you all have your cameras on girls cuz I'm trying to see if I can see all of you. Okay, I see you Hansa there. Good. Okay, awesome. And then I see Shreya and I see Risha. Very good. 
Cool. So we're going to, so they're going to do their first presentation. And then after their presentation, uh, we'll have the next presentation by the teenager. So a couple of, again, requests. I'll request everyone to please be on mute so that we can hear the girls presenting. Um, and then any questions that you have for Gopal Chandra Prabhu, for these girls, and for the next presentation, please put them in chat. It could be questions, comments, uh, realizations, and anything else you'd like to add to their presentations, please put that in the chat. Uh, and then after we finish both the presentations, we'll go through everything in one shot. So with that, I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen here. Okay, so hi everyone. Today we're going to be talking about what is karma, and this presentation was made by Risha, Hansa, and me, and we're going to be covering the materials from um, verses 4.16 to 4.19. So what is karma? The dictionary definition of karma is the sum of a person's actions in this and previous states of existence, viewed as deciding their fate in future existence. And this means that karma has a form of credit that you can accrue and carry from life to life. And it's attached to your soul. So no matter what material body you take, it follows you. And karma comes in three forms. Positive action, which is just karma. Negative action, big karma. And inaction, which is known as a karma. And we'll be elaborating on all three types of karma in this presentation. And karma can be built up over time and cause a series of good or bad things to happen to you. Because it is built up, it has to be exhausted, whether in this life or the ones to come. And karma is the reaction to all of our actions. Very similar to Newton's third law, yet the reaction does not always have to be opposite or has to be a direct result of a previous action. And while the word karma refers to all three types of karma, it can also refer to just the good type. An example of good karma would be earning a lot of money and giving some to charity. It's definitely not a bad thing, and it's not spiritual, also known as a karma, which is something we'll be referring to later in this presentation. And good karma is great to have, but it's not the best type because you will have to exhaust the good karma that you accumulate in the lives to come. There's no scientific reason why bad things happen to good people, vice versa, or why things happen at all. Next, Risha will be talking about some misconceptions and myths relating to karma. So what isn't karma? Misconceptions and myths. These first two bullet points on the slide are talking about how karma is really complicated and we don't know how it will or has appeared in our life. Oftentimes something that seems good may not be good and something that is good may be bad. And on all in all, karma is very complicated. So a good note to do is not, try not to spend too much time trying to understand it. Karma is all about perspective. So something that looks good may be bad and something and vice versa. A good like story to illustrate this that Madhvi Mataji told us in class was about this king, I forgot his name, but he was a very good king and him and his minister were out hunting. And when they were hunting, somehow the king got his thumb chopped off. And the minister told the king that this was his good karma. And the king was like, "This, how can this be my good karma? My thumb just got chopped off. And he ordered the minister to be put in jail. The next day when the minister was, when the king was going on his hunting again, he was found by cannibals and they tied him up and they were about to eat him. But then they noticed that his thumb was missing. And because his thumb was missing, they couldn't eat him because he wasn't perfect. So they let him go free. And the king realized that his thumb getting chopped off was his good karma because he was still alive. And he realized that his minister was right. So he uh, like freed his minister from jail. And then, he and then he asked him, but if you were telling me a good thing, wouldn't that be good karma? Why were you locked up in jail? And the minister said, but if I wasn't locked up in jail, I would have been eaten because I don't have any missing limbs. So the story shows that the king thought his thumb getting chopped off was bad karma, but it was good karma. And when he jailed the minister, he thought that was bad karma too, but it was actually good karma. So it's all about perspective, right? And in the grand, karma is all about the grand scheme of things, not what happens right then. Another important note is that karma is not instantaneous. It's accumulated through past lives and your current life. 
it's not like I suddenly donate a bunch of money to charity and then like two days later I get a bunch of money from random from a random place. It's kind of like when you forget to do your homework. You don't start your homework that's due tomorrow. You start the homework first that was due through three weeks ago. And it's really important for us not to use karma as a crutch. By choosing to blame karma, we are choosing not to take responsibility for our actions. Blaming karma for something that happened to us would be like me blaming the microwave for my table being rickety. It makes no sense. And it's frankly, it's just silly. And we shouldn't use it as a crutch for why things happen to us or why things might be happening to other people. Rather, we should take responsibility for our actions. The intricacies of action are very hard to understand. Therefore, one should know properly what action is, what forbidden action is, and what inaction is. So this verse, this verse introduces a concept of forbidden action or v-karma pretty briefly. However, it's important to understand, like how previously mentioned, karma is not a simple concept and it's really difficult to understand no matter how spiritual you may be. When most people hear karma, they immediately think that all karma is a bad kind you get from immoral actions, when in reality, what they're thinking of is actually be karma, and it's a lot more complicated than just being the bad kind of karma. So there are three kinds of karma. There's karma, a karma, and v karma, and they're often intertwined, and the borders that keep them separated are usually more blurry than you would think. One good way to understand what is and what isn't v karma is by looking at the purport summary for this verse. One has to learn one's relationship with the Supreme, one who has learned perfectly knows that every living entity is an eternal servitor of the Lord and that consequently one has to act in Krishna consciousness. It is mentioned that any action um, that's not based on this conclusion, part of our own duty or out of our own moral goodness is considered be karma. So in other words, if you're not carrying out an action with Krishna in mind, or if your goal isn't to help perform your duty depending on who you are, you earn be karma. To help understand what vikarma is and what isn't vikarma, let's talk about some examples. The first example is about an older sibling helping out their younger sibling by putting on their shoe for them. Even though the older one isn't probably thinking about Krishna or some sort of godhead right now, this would not be vikarma because the older brother is simply just performing his duty by being a good older sibling. However, Eleanor from the show The Good Place, stealing all of the shrimp from a cocktail party, is most likely not done with any spiritual intention and it definitely isn't part of her of part of her moral duty so that would be considered be karma however if eleanor later felt bad about her actions and me oh however um um you can actually see how eleanor's uh be karma came to play because the next morning when she sh when she woke up she saw that there were giant shrimp flying, flying through the sky which is not a really accurate example of how karma works so it's better not to look towards that example. Um, but later, if Eleanor felt bad about her actions and she decided to go to her nearest temple, that would not be the karma and that would actually be a karma because she's performing a, a duty in the name of God. So here's a, a few disclaimers. Not all instances of, instances of what is and what isn't the karma are as simple as that. Like I said before, the three kinds of karma are very meticulous to differentiate, and even though someone's intention may be well, the actual action can complicate things if it's not considered morally correct. However, it's natural for everyone to accumulate some big karma throughout their lives, so, um, and it affects everyone in different ways. But the main goal is to eventually learn to accumulate, accumulate more karma and avoid ways of gaining, akarma, of gaining karma and big karma. To gain a better understanding of what a karma or spiritual karma is, let's read the translation of verse 4.18. One who sees inaction in action and action in inaction is intelligent among men, and he is in the transcendental position, although engaged in all sorts of activities. All three kinds of karma are entangled, but a karma is above both karma and the karma. And any action with Krishna in mind accumulated does not need to be exhausted. So a karma means without reaction to work. So this type of karma when it is accumulated through spiritual activities. But all type of karma has to be, whenever you have karma, the reaction has to be played out. Like our karma has no reaction to play out. 
So the more up karma you gain, the less reactions you have to play out and the less chance you'll have of taking a birth again. And one who acts in Krishna consciousness, an arkarma is collected when a person performs an action with spirituality as the intent rather than for a result, whether good or bad. And that means that the karma that you accumulate, even though a karma is accumulated, it never needs to be exhausted in the future. And it's just done for a spiritual reason, not a result. One who acts in Krishna consciousness is free from the bonds of karma. And collecting a karma helps one escape the birth and death cycle. So as we both talked about earlier, a karma is done with spirituality and it has no reaction. So if you continue to act with spirituality and God in the mindset of your actions, then when you then while you're collecting that karma, you don't have to have as many reactions to take birth again. And ultimately you will be able to get closer to escaping the birth and death cycle. And one who acquires a karma is in full knowledge because you need to be in full knowledge to understand actions done for Krishna, whether you are the doer of the actions or other people are doing those actions for Krishna. Now, Risha and Chareya will give some examples on what is and what isn't a karma. So let's look at the example of a kid doing chore, extra chores to earn money for his allowance. There are a few factors that go into whether he gains karma or karma. If the kid saves up his money to buy new toys and games for himself, that would likely gain him karma because he's working for something that he wants and it will make him happy. But if he's instead saved up to donate to his local temple, that would be a karma because he's carrying on an action with the purpose of serving Krishna. In the end, the kid will be happy with either of his decisions and he worked for both of them. The only difference is that with karma, anything could happen as a result and it could affect his future or even his next life. And as we know, karma can be very unpredictable. And if he's accumulated a lot, there's no saying what could happen. But with akarma, he only becomes closer to Krishna and moves up in spirituality. So another example would be living a normal life and carrying out your basic necessities, such as eating, sleeping, doing well in school, etc., all while thinking of God in the meantime. This would be considered a karma because you're just doing what's expected of you. You're performing your basic duties while also centering your life around God. But on the other hand, if you decide to spend a lot of money on everything you do and you decide to live very lavishly and spend a lot of money on fast cars and big houses without thinking of God in the meantime, this wouldn't necessarily be the karma because it's not bad, but it definitely would not be a karma because it's not necessary and you're not centering your life around God. So for the summary, we have to remember that karma is a reaction to all of our actions. Just because it's a reaction to all of our actions doesn't really make it easy to understand. And we have to keep in mind that the reactions may not be equal or opposite. It's very unpredictable. And there are three types of karma. There's karma, which is the good kind, which is the karma that you get from doing good actions, but not necessarily spiritual actions. The karma, which is the bad kind of karma, like what I talked about before. And there's a karma, which is considered inaction or spiritual karma, and is the kind of karma that we should all uh, strive to earn more. Karma is accumulated through lifetimes and follows you wherever you, your soul may go. And it's very complicated, so she, we shouldn't be making too many assumptions. Karma can appear in all forms and fashions, and it's something we shouldn't become attached to. It's a reflection of our, of our past deeds usually, but it can show up in many ways. And one who is attached to karma does action for results, which is the opposite of a karma, the type we're trying to accumulate. Overall, we should try to live a virtuous and spiritual life without considering the effects of karma and how it affects us and others, because we don't know where that karma has come from or how we may have accumulated or why it's showing up. Even Krishna says that karma is complicated and that we should focus on doing our duty in life. Overall, karma should not be used as a crutch and we should focus on living our best possible life. And thank you for listening to our presentation. Good job, girls. Very nice. Um, again, devotees, encourage you all to please put stuff in the chat if you have any questions, um, if you have comments, you know, encouragement, anything, let's put it in the chat and we'll go through all of that after we do our next presentation. So next we have what is sacrifice, which is going to be presented 
by Akhil, Sanker, and Kirti. Are you all ready? Yes, Matsuji. Hare, oh. Oh. Hare Krishna. Uh, today we will be talking about what is sacrifice based on Bhagavad Gita verses 4.25 to 4.33 presented by Akhil, Sanket, and Kirti. So sacrifice means to give up something that you want to do something for someone else. And we see this in our lives every day, all the time. And we see it from so many different people. A great example of this is the sacrifice from parents. Parents sacrifice so much of their time, effort, and they put in so much care for the well-being of their children. And similarly, we need sacrifice to strengthen any friendship and relationship in this world. And in the same way, we can deepen our eternal relationship with Krishna by sacrificing, as we'll see in the next few slides. Hare Krishna. So let's talk about sacrifice performed by the four divisions of human life, which are Pramachari or student life, Grihastha or household life, Vanaprastha or retired life, and Sanyas or renounced life. So ideally we were supposed to live a hundred years on this Kali, I mean on this earth. So the system is designed so you can live hundred year, you can live twenty-five years of your life in each of these stages. And so you can make gradual progress in spiritual life and at last achieve perfection in the stage of sannyas. So let's start by talking about the sacrifice of brahmacharis. Brahmacharis control the mind by abstaining from sense gratification. They hear words only concerning Krishna consciousness, meaning they sacrifice their hearing process for Krishna. And they engage fully in Hare Nama and Kirtanam, hearing and chanting of the glories of the Lord. Then let's move on to the Grihastha life. So householders have some license for sense gratification, but perform such acts with great restraints. So householder sacrifices his general tendency towards sense gratification for higher transcendental life. So in Kali Yuga, there's tendencies for humans to get intoxicated, to gamble, to eat meat, to have illicit sex. But if you sacrifice these, you can have a higher transcendental life. So let's talk about one of the process. Oh. Uh, okay. So let's talk about one of the process. So at the age of 50, you were supposed to give up you're supposed to give up your kids and take up the life of a Vana Prasta. So this is a stage where your kids are married and you may have desire for spiritual life, but this also comes with sacrifices. So Sanyasi is retired from household life. He must give up family affection, affection for his family. He must give up sexual relationship with his wife. He must give up family responsibilities gradually. So Vana Prastas ideally is supposed to like live in the forest, but that is not possible in the Kali Yuga. So most Vandapresas now go on a lot of pilgrimages. So then let's move on to sannyas. So a sannyasi is supposed to sacrifice everything and completely depend on the Lord. So when a sannyasi is typically initiated, he, he is given a danda composed of three wooden rods. Each of them signifies mind, body, and speech. So when the sannyasi is initiated, he takes a while that he will use all these, all these three in the service of the Lord. Okay, then the sannyasi is supposed to give up his family connections. And a sannyasi is supposed to wear saffron colored clothing articles. So please bear with me. The next two might sound a little bit controversial, but I'll try to explain it. So sannyasi is supposed to give up fire. That means he cannot cook. And he's supposed to give up residential quarters, meaning he cannot have his own house. So that is mentioned by Prabhupada in Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 4, Chapter 24, I mean, Canto 3, Chapter 24, Verse 42. So Prabhupada says that. But Prabhupada in the Lilam Ritaid is mentioned that, 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 in this age of Kali, sannyasi is especially difficult. Sannyasa is especially difficult. So Pro, it's said in Vilamrit, I'm going to quote it. So it is, it is the duty of a mendicant to experience all varieties of God's creation as a body of Rajakacharya, or traveling alone through all forests, hills, towns, villages, etc., to gain faith in God and strength of mind, as well as to enlighten the inhabitants of the message of the God. In this age of Kali, Prabhupada explained, sannyasi is especially difficult. If, however, one did take sannyas, one may take the vow of renunciation of family life, may not imitate the Parivrajakacharyas like Narada or Lord Chaitanya, but may sit down at some holy place and devote the whole time and energy in hearing and repeatedly chanting the holy scriptures left by great Acharyas like the six, six Goswamis of Vrindavan. That's from Srila Prabhupada Lilamrita, Wali 1, Chapter 34. So this shows us that in Kali Yuga, it is hard to follow things a typical sannyas should. Like I mentioned, they give up fire. So last two points about giving up cooking and residence is very hard to follow in this Kali Yuga. 
So the sannyasi is now completely surrendered unto the Lord and engage themselves in the surroundings around them in the service of the Lord. Instead of doing what the typical sannyasi used to do, the sannyasi is now engaged what they have in the service of the Lord. So the sannyasis then had a different role. They would travel as Padipraja Kacharyas and enlighten people. But now the sannyasis focus more on spreading Krishna consciousness instead of traveling through forests and experiencing the varieties of God's creation. Hare Krishna. Okay. Today I'll be speaking about sacrifice and knowledge. In Bhagavad Gita chapter 4 verse 33, it says that sacrifices performed in knowledge are superior to the sacrifices performed with the material things. The purpose of all sacrifices is to arrive at the this, this status of complete knowledge and then gain release from the material miseries and to engage in loving transcendental service to the Supreme Lord. Real knowledge culminates in Krishna consciousness, the highest stage of transcendental knowledge. When one's faith reaches the stage of transcendental knowledge, the performer of the sacrifices should be considered more advanced than those who simply sacrifice material possessions without such knowledge. Sacrifice sometimes takes different forms according to the particular faith of the performer. Without the attainment of knowledge, sacrifice Oh, sacrifices are just material activities and has no spiritual benefit. So it doesn't matter how many sacrifices you perform, but without the knowledge, they're all just material activities and don't have any spiritual benefit. And if they're elevated to the level of such knowledge, all such should be in the spiritual platform. Depending on difference in consciousness, are called uh, karma kanda and sometimes jnana kanda. It's better when uh, the end is knowledge. So in verse 4.31, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada talks about how the existence in the material world is caused by the reactions of our past sinful activities, which we perform due to our ignorance. And the sinful activities drag us deeper into the material existence. And Srila Prabhupada says that the human form of life is the only loophole by which we can get out of this entanglement. And we can do this by following the Vedas, which give us a chance for escape by showing us the different paths of religion, regulated sense gratification, and most importantly, the way to get out of this miserable condition entirely. And there are different types of various material comforts and different heavenly planets. And in all of these cases, there is a lot of happiness for people who are engaged in different kinds of yajna, which is sacrifice. But the highest kind of happiness that one can achieve is to be promoted to the spiritual planets by practicing Krishna consciousness. And a life of Krishna consciousness is therefore the solution to all the problems of material existence. And with that, we'll conclude. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, um, both the groups for presenting uh, this was, I think, the first time we actually did group presentations um, from our Sunday school, so for youth class. So I think they all did a really good job. Um, just looking at, it looks like a lot of wonderful comments here um, from everyone. Uh, I, there's one question from um, Ramvajar Prabhu that I am going to ask you all. Of, this is for the karma if they steal the presentation or the video that you all did for karma, is that karma, a karma, or a karma? He's going to steal that to show his younger class. What do you all think? Is that karma, a karma, or a karma? It depends on why he's doing it. So Ramajay Prabhu, why are you planning to steal it? To educate the younger kids in the Govind Vidya class. So then, Michelle, what do you think? Do you think that's what kind of karma is that? A karma? I would say it's a karma. Good. Very good. So she's giving you permission to steal. That was your <laughs> um, Some other questions. Um, how can a student perform sacrifice while performing their duty? So this is a question for the group that did sacrifice. Um, so a student can perform sacrifice while doing their duty by um, putting Krishna in the center. So like while we um, 
perform our duty, we always think of Krishna. So instead of thinking about like, I want to get good grades because I want to be like the top of the class. Instead, we can think, I want to do my duty for Krishna. So um, yeah, thank you. Very good. Any other questions or comments, devotees? Both groups did such a fantastic job of covering um, sections of the fourth chapter. Okay, good job, everyone. Uh, the question is now for Gopal Chandra Prabhu. Uh, thank you, Gopal Chandra Prabhu. Sometimes our mind intelligence falls ego clash. How do we react in such situations? So today we're putting so many people on the spot by asking them questions, which is a good thing. Gopal Chandra Prabhu? Thank you, Ramji Prabhu, for uh, that wonderful uh, deep question. And sometimes our mind intelligence and uh, false ego clash. Uh, so, uh, so as we know, uh, the mind intelligence and false ego, they are still part of the material world. They are uh, subtle bodies, but they are still uh, material. So we have to understand like how like the mind is a storehouse of impressions. Forces we indulge in something. So that is the function of the mind. And the intelligence, sometimes uh, the mind uh, may influence the intelligence, but that's when the intelligence, we need to uh, develop and equip the intelligence with the right knowledge uh, by associating with people. Uh, so the intelligence need to be trained. Now going to false ego, the false ego is the, the most difficult to overcome, right? Because uh, it always thinks, okay, the focus is always me. Okay, I'm the doer. Uh, even, um, even if, uh, uh, your uh, your wisdom or your intelligence is guiding you, you would think, okay, it's my intelligence. Okay, I am the doer. I'm controlling everything. So that is very difficult to overcome. But again, uh, we, we have to, that's when we have to, uh, through association and through understanding, okay, the soul's nature, okay, but I am not any of this. I'm not mind or intelligence or false ego. I mean, they, they can give me different uh, input, different suggestions for different situations, but I am not any one of them. Uh, uh, by by nature, I'm spirit soul. I, I'm supposed to be the servant of uh, Sri Krishna, and that we we can we can get that understanding by associating with uh, devotees who practice that in their day-to-day -day life, and then by reading scriptures, uh, we're training uh, uh, very uh, meticulously, and uh, understand uh, getting getting that understanding. So so the clash can be avoided by in one way by kind of ignoring them. If you think about it. Uh, Okay, uh, so you have to evaluate, okay, if the mind is uh, bringing back some impressions, is this uh, in uh, alignment with uh, the teachings or the, the whatever I'm hearing from my authorities? If not, then ignore the suggestion offered by the mind. Same thing, the intelligence, again, whatever the intelligence uh, uh, is proposing me, okay, is it again uh, in line with uh, the Shastras? Is it in line with uh, what I'm hearing from senior devotees? Uh, the, if not, then ignore the intelligence also. And of course, false ego, I mean, obviously, even in today's class, we saw how Krishna is the ultimate doer. He is the controller. I mean, we can, uh, stu out of stupidity, we can think we are controlling it. I'm the doer and everything. So we can, uh, uh, that way we can ignore the false ego also. So that way we can ignore all these three, uh, three things. If they are not uh, helping us, if they are not going to help us in our ultimate purpose or helping us in our path of bhakti, uh, that way we can uh, just uh, uh, completely uh, uh, ignore them and... Uh, uh, move towards our goals uh, based on the guidance uh, that are given by the Shastras and the uh, higher authorities. Hope that answered your question, Ramaji Prabhu. That was a detailed answer, but is that clear? Thank you. Thank you, Prabhu. Thank you so much, Prabhu, for that. And again, thank you to all the teams for the presentation today. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We'll move over to announcements because we actually have quite a few announcements today. So thank you again, Gopal Chandra Prabhu, for that really wonderful class. I uh, also want to take a special thank you to the teenagers for the really cool presentations on karma and sacrifice. There's a lot of things that we learned uh, while seeing their presentations. And it's a great job. Next week, we will hear from the remaining teenagers on what is the difference between us and God and what are the qualities uh, of a spiritual person, both these topics from the fourth chapter of the Gita. We'd like to thank our monthly donors for their continued support. Um, it really means a lot in this time. 
our temple has now been officially closed for the past since March. It's almost six months now, so it's been a really long time. Uh, Earlier this last month, we actually celebrated one year of doing programs at the temple. So it is kind of funny that uh, six months of that one year have actually been spent as doing programs outside the temple. So we really appreciate your support uh, to help us maintain the temple at this time. Uh, we'll, uh, please keep up to date through WhatsApp, email, YouTube, lots of fun programs planned and coming up uh, in September. So please stay tuned to everything that is going on here. This past week, there were a lot of festivals that took place. Um, so we wanted to cover some of the cultural festivals first um, on Friday or Saturday, depending on where you're from. Uh, we had last Friday or Saturday was Ganesh Chaturthi, uh, the appearance of Lord Ganesh, Lord Ganesh's contribution uh, in, in his devotion to Krishna is unparalleled. There are so many stories um, on how committed Lord Ganesh is to serve Krishna. And many devotees, um, you know, pray to Lord Ganesh to help remove obstacles in their own spiritual path. Yesterday was Vamana Dvadashi, which is the appearance day of Vamandev, uh, one of the 10 incarnations of Krishna. Uh, Vamandev appeared to help deliver ba Bali Maharaj, the very famous pastime. Uh, Vamandev is also known as Trivikrama because of the three steps he took um, based on Bali Maharaj, based on what he asked Bali Maharaj. Uh, for those of you who celebrate August 22nd to September 2nd is Onam. Uh, Onam is a very popular festival, particularly in Kerala. And I know some people from Tamil Nadu also celebrate this festival. So, we wanted to wish you all a happy Onam. Um, this literally yesterday, today, and tomorrow, um, very significant from a Gaudiya Vaishnava perspective, is we're celebrating appearance and disappearance of three great, great Vaishnavas. Um, yesterday was the appearance of Jiva Goswami, who is one of our six Goswamis, uh, and he is a nephew of Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. Jiva Goswami is considered one of the greatest authors in Gaudiya, not just in Gaudiya Vaishnava, uh, but just in Vaishnava history. He has written 25 different literary works. The most popular of those include uh, Shatsandarvas, Gopal Champu, uh, and various other texts. He personally served uh, and helped edit Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami's work. Um, and uh, Jiva Goswami has also established the very famous Radha Damodar temple uh, where uh, His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swamisha Prabhupada stayed and meditated in Radha Damodar temple before moving to the U.S. Uh, so yesterday was Jiva Goswami's appearance day. Today is the, was the appearance day of, is the appearance day of Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur. Um, Bhakti, Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur is a renowned author and teacher. He's the father of Bhakti Siddhanta Sasvai Thakur, who is a spiritual master of Srila Prabhupada. Um, Bhakti Vinod Thakur is very special and very relevant to many of us uh, because he was a grahastha. He had many children, but in his, and he was a district magistrate. So he was working um, and had family, but he was completely dedicated to spiritual life. Uh, some years ago, we did a presentation on Bhakti Vinod Thakur and I, I honestly feel that he had more than 24 hours in a day because he was doing so much packed into 24 hours a day. Uh, he's a renowned author and teacher, wrote some beautiful, beautiful bhajans, uh, very popular that are sung uh, regularly in temples. Um, and he was also a great writer. He wrote uh, articles about explaining Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Gaudiya Vaishnava philosophy, and sent these articles, not just within India to scholars, but worldwide. Um, some of his scholarly papers ended up in McGill University in Canada. Uh, well, Raffold or Emerson sent him a reply appreciating his theistic writings. He was a very so between his like day-to-day -day job and taking care of his family, he also wrote extensively. So today we want to honor um, Bhaktivinoda Thakur for his contribution uh, to, again, not just Gaudiya Vaishnavism, but to all of, um, all of Vaishnavas and helping spread the teachings and significance of uh, Mahaprabhu and Krishna. Tomorrow is the disappearance day of Srila Haridas Thakur. Uh, Srila Haridas Thakur is a prominent Vaishnava saint. Um, whenever Srila Prabhupada talks about uh, compassion and tolerance, he mentions Jesus Christ and Haridas Thakur uh, because Haridas Thakur was born into a Muslim family, but he was attracted to the holy name of Krishna and he used to chant 300,000 times daily. I'm going to repeat that number again. 300,000 times daily he used to chant the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And because he was, because of this, he was often, uh, you know, beaten in marketplaces and punished uh, for chanting uh, at that time but he never he never reacted he never uh, lost his patience he never said krishna how dare you give me so much suffering because i'm chanting uh, he continued to chant um, right before uh, in anti leela of chaitanya charitamrita it describes the passing away of shlahidas thakur shlahidas thakur knew that mahaprabhu's pastimes in the in this world were coming to close so he had a desire 
that he wanted to leave this body before Mahaprabhu did. Uh, and he prayed, he requested to Mahaprabhu that he wanted to do it in his presence. And he had some other requests for Mahaprabhu about his personal disappearance. And um, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu complied because Haridas Thakur's great devotion. Uh, so Haridas Thakur uh, uh, disappeared before Mahaprabhu and Mahaprabhu personally performed his end rites. So Haridas Thakur is a very, very, very special devotee. And uh, whenever we chant our japa, it's very special to meditate on Haridas Thakur. So we are very fortunate that we have acharyas like this in our, in our family uh, who have our back and from whom we can learn so much about devotional service. Okay, now after talking about our acharyas, is everyone here ready to go to Goloka? Well, if you're not, then get ready. Ooh, apparently my computer is Hare Krishna. Uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam is the jewel of all Vedic scriptures. It's said in the Srimad Bhagavatam, 1st Canto, 5th Chapter, 31st Text. By that confidential knowledge, I could understand clearly the influence of the energy of Lord Sri Krishna, the creator, maintainer, and annihilator of everything. And knowing that, I could return to him and personally meet him. Um, this is that confidential knowledge. Uh, if you don't have a Srimad Bhagavatam set, I highly encourage you to do so. Just having one inside of your home uh, brings all peace and austerity to your household. So, please sign up to... Srimad Bhagavatam is a very Vedic Shastra. In your home, Srimad Bhagavatam will come to your home and your home. Please accept it. For more information, you can sign up for more information. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Tinte Gaudu Denali, Tinte Bhagatam Denali, Antali. Veda Lokella, Mani Hara Mainuva Twenty, Shiman Bhagatam, Chadivina, Leka. At least, me intla unna koda meru, Shanti, Sabhagyalato, Virajilita. So please take a Shiman Bhagatam set today. Sign up for more information. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, तो हम आज तमने श्रीमद् भागवतम विषय थोड़ी माहिती आपे साजे तो श्रीमद् भागवतम ये बदाज वैदिक शास्त्रों में कई सकाय के रत्न छे श्रीमद् भागवतम में टोटल 12 स्कंद छे अने 18 बुक्स छे तो श्रीमद् भागवतम ने रचना श्रीला वेद व्यासे करी थी अने जहां श्रीला वेद व्यासे जारे बदाज वैदिक पुराण पुराण त्यारे तेमने ना तेमने गुरु मारा नारद जी ने पूछी हो क्या बदलने पास का कारण सूचे त्यारे नारद जी का युद्ध के तमे बदुल लक्ष्य पन कृष्ण ने लीला नु क्या युवरण नती करी त्यारे तेमने सीमत भागवत ने रचना करी थी तो तमे हाँ सीमत भागवत तमे तमे तमारा फ्रेंड्स ने अने मित्रों ने रिलेटिव्स ने तमे � Hare Krishna. 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 श्रीमद् भागवतम वैदिक पुराण रोगोटे महारत्न आपण ने जग हरे श्रीमद् भागवतम रखिले सुख शांति एवं पवित्रता रहिबा 
आज श्रीमद् भागवतम सब सेट निज घर को नि हरे कृष्ण श्रीमद् भागवतम एला वेद धर्म ग्रंथ मुकुट रत्न विभत भागवतम रसम आलय श्रीमद् भागवतम श्री सुखदेव गोस्वामी शुभ मुखद सवि आनंद पड़े भाद्रपद मसित्र ग्रंथव खरिद अति शुभ फल प्रदित्र ग्रंथव खरिदी कृतार्थर विन मन श्रीमद् भागवतम अब रीतियालू मंगलक श्रीकृष्ण भगवंत श्रीमद् भागवतम भिन्नवल श्रीमद् भागवतम श्रीकृष्णन ग्रंथवर अवतार इवते तक सैन हरे कृष्ण So we figured that instead of um, instead of just me sharing why it's important to Shrimad Bhagavatam, we wanted to have multiple devotees share, and not just in one language, in multiple languages, on the importance of Shrimad Bhagavatam. So again, devotees, we like to firstly thank everyone who has uh, requested for sets, um, who purchased sets to give as gifts to the, the friends and family. But the, you know, the time we still have one more, two more days for Bhadra Purnima, um, and then of course for the Yagya on the second. But it's an opportunity uh, to give Shrimad Bhagavatam. them to your friends and family it is an opportunity for yourself to gift yourself to shrimad bhagavatam uh the shrimad bhagavatam set each set is 250 dollars um and each of them it, it they're they're the no price tag is sufficient for the amount of knowledge um and the amount of auspiciousness that one can get from shrimad bhagavatam in their home so if you, you have not taken a set for yourself or gotten a set for your friends and family this is your opportunity to do so Um, if you'd like to sponsor a set today, or you'd like to get a set for yourself, um, we will please, um, you know, message on the Zoom chat or send me a message directly, uh, and that will be wonderful. Uh, Ramachandra Prabhu, you're asking, can names be submitted for Yagya? So any devotees who distribute, give a set to their friends as gifts, uh, or anyone who purchases their own set, or anyone who has, uh, you know, sponsored a set, all of their names will be submitted to the Yagya. So we are, uh, we're requesting, we're going to be submitting names. By By tonight, uh, but then we also have time tomorrow and day after to submit. So, you know, Krishna is giving us this amazing opportunity. This year, we also have Adik Mas or Prashota Mat coming up later in September. So, there's just so many opportunities for us to, uh, if you have Shri Madh Bhagavatam, to read Shri Madh Bhagavatam. But if you don't have Shri Madh Bhagavatam, to actually get a set for yourself. So, please, please, if you don't have a set for yourself, and when I mean yourself, not for your family. Uh, when someone eats, you don't just eat one bite. Like Gopal Chandra Prabhu doesn't take a bite and expect everybody in his family to be fully satisfied by him eating a bite. Similarly, just by one person in the house owning Shri Mad Bhagavatam or reading Shri Mad Bhagavatam, it does not fulfill everyone. So please get as many Bhagavatam sets as people are there in your house. And this is not just me trying to sell, but it's a legit thing. Like you don't want to fight over what page you are in Shri Mad Bhagavatam. There are bigger things to fight about, like getting an Android or an iPhone. But what page you're in, Shri Mad Bhagavatam, not worth the fight. So please make sure everyone has their own set of Shri Mad Bhagavatam. We have Bhagavatam available in different languages, um, and we will be personally delivering it to devotees, or devotees can come and pick it up from our home uh, in the next little, whenever they like. With that, we are ready to wrap up with announcements. Uh, Krishna book reading has been going on really well. We are almost two third of the way down. We're hitting the last thirty chapters of Krishna book very soon, uh, which talk about almost all of Krishna's pastimes in Dwarka, which are very sweet pastimes. Um, if devotees would like to sign up a reading slot, please do so because uh, we had a lot of devotees sign up obviously early on for the first chapters, and we we have a lot of open spot vacancies for the later chapters. So please sign up. Um, special prize requested today. Uh, His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj was tested positive for COVID this morning. Um, uh, this morning, U.S. time. I'm assuming it was yesterday, India time, or earlier today, India time. Uh, but Maharaj, uh, by Krishna's mercy, so far is in, is in very um, good spirits and he's doing fine. Uh, they will be taking Maharaj to the hospital just to, for precautionary purposes. Uh, but we want to pray uh, for His Holiness Gopal Krishna Maharaj. Um, Gopal Krishna Maharaj um, was uh, one of the original GBCs appointed by Shri Prabhupada. Um, Gopal Krishna Maharaj's contribution uh, in Iskand. Is unparalleled. Marge has, um, you know, has has such amazing uh, vision. And you know, if any of you have been to Delhi and has see, have seen the beautiful Radha Parthasarthi Temple in Delhi, just can have a vision of how 
how it's how amazing Gopal Krishna Maharaj is and how far he thinks. So we want to pray sincerely that Maharaj recovers very soon and is back uh, to spearheading amazing projects with the pleasure of Shri Prabhupada. Uh, again, the number of people impacted by COVID numbers keep increasing daily, as we can see. Um, and we want to pray for everybody who is impacted, affected uh, by COVID. We all at this time, I'm sure, know at least one or two people or more people who have been affected by this, uh, this virus. So we want to take an opportunity to pray for them. With that, we will hand over to Dev Key for initiating the prayers. Hare Krishna Mataji, can you hear me? Yes. Namaste, Thank <laughs> you. 
Thank you so much, Devki. Jai Vita. We will end our Sunday program. We'll keep the bridge open for a few more minutes if devotees want to check in with each other. Hare Krishna.